The Bible is the mark of the beast. Now, I had a feeling the other night, I laid down, it's about twilight, as long as I was just laid down, and in my soul, I felt something I'd never felt, and I'm 77 years old, I never felt before. And it felt like death, you know, it felt terrible. And I couldn't seem like to remove it. And I inquired of the Lord, and you know, you know, he was telling me that the Holy Ghost is grieved. And I had read that in the Bible, but I'd never experienced it before. It says, grieve not the Holy Ghost. And uh, it's, uh, it's a thing that until you experience it, you won't realize what it is. But it, grief is like sorrow or it's, it's an injustice type of thing that people grieve at, at funerals and things. And I was saying, why is the Holy Ghost grieving so much? Well, we've lost. It's over, you know. And grieve not the Holy Ghost of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. So, see, grieving the Holy Ghost, that's one of the worst things, see, because do you know what has happened now? The Holy Ghost has given up on the world. And I'm going to explain that to you. But it's very simple, and I asked him why, and he showed me some of the reasons why. He said they will not endure sound doctrine today. They can't believe the truth. It's impossible for them to believe the truth. It's like me when I was raised as a hillbilly boy back in Appalachian Mountains. Well, we were hunters, you know. We, we'd go out hunting and, and fishing, and we was mountain people. And we, I had things in me that come in me when I was a boy that was just a part of our culture in the mountains. And later I had to repent of a lot of the things that they had taught me to do, you know. And we'd kill anything that moved. We carried shotguns and guns and pistols all the time. And uh, we kind of lived by the sword. Well, I had to repent over that. Well, today people can't repent. They've come to a place where they cannot repent. And it's too late. You know, it's too late now. And I want you to listen to me today. Because this is the last voice. This will be your last voice on earth. Now, the earth may go on 25, 50, 100 more years. I don't even know. But the, the trumpet will sound one day, and then you'll know that God's fighting against the, the earth. But this is your last voice. Now, I want to explain something to you that's so simple that uh, a child can understand. See, Satan, back in 1611, he was fixing his world till he could control it. See, 2 billion, 300 million people are controlled by this book. And Jesus sent the Holy Ghost. So, this is what has happened. The book has stopped the voice of Jesus Christ. Now, listen to what I'm telling you. This is so simple. Say I stand here and I tell you a truth, a plain truth that you cannot escape from. And I tell you, I say, when did the New Testament begin? Well, anybody that has any knowledge knows that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And it tells you in Hebrews 9 and 16, 17, he said, uh, uh, the, the testament is not enforced until the death of the testator. Well, Jesus stood the test on Mount Calvary. And so, when he, took, when he stood the test, that was the shedding of his blood. He said, take and drink. This is the cup of the, new te the blood of the New Testament. And so, he died. Okay, now, I, I have been on YouTube now with videos almost five years. And I know how Bible worshipers think. I've encountered thousands and thousands of them. And you listen to me very closely. They cannot endure sound doctrine. When I tell them, okay, Jesus shed his blood on Mount Calvary. Right. They got that. Then I tell them, then you have to say that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are old covenant. It shouldn't have been called testament in the first place. Because a testament was the test. Like Abraham stood the test to sacrifice Isaac and things like that. That's the test. God tests us. He tries us. So Jesus gave up the, the flesh for the spirit. On Mount Calvary, the graves were opened. The veil was rent in twain. This was the New Testament. He stood the test. Took the book out of the Father's hand. And so, when I tell them that, I say, then you got to say, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the Old Covenant. And the Bible is a liar. They can't do it. They cannot do it. They will actually deny the sacrifice that Jesus made to keep this book. So it's over. And that's what the Holy Ghost was grieved about. You can't convert them now. They're into this. Now, it's not saying that there won't be a few. There's a few Holy Ghost people on earth today, and they know this is the truth, but most of them have to stay low. 
You can't even say the Bible is the mark of the beast in a bar room. You can't say it on the streets. You can't say it where you live. You can't say it amongst your family or nothing because it's the Word of God. And that's the way it's going to be in these last days. This has taken over the world. You presidents swearing on it. All you politicians swearing on it in other countries as well as this country. And it's, uh, it's taken over. So we lost. We have lost now. This is the last voice you will hear. Now, what we're going to do, we have to keep a little light burning. Jesus said, keep a little light burning. There'll be a few coming in every now and then. They'll see this light. They know it's true. Well, a Bible worshiper knows it's true. See, when I encounter a Bible worshiper and I said, uh, you say in Timothy, all scriptures give them inspiration of God. And I said, but it, Paul told Timothy, neglect not the gift that's in you, Timothy. Stir up the gift of God that's in you, Timothy. We're kept by the Holy Ghost which dwells in us, Timothy. They'll not consider that because they know that is the new covenant and that's the Holy Ghost covenant and they cannot keep the Holy Ghost covenant because they're under John Hagee's covenant. They're under Kenneth Copeland's covenant. Billy Graham and them. They say this is the Word of God. That the Holy Ghost is not the Word of God. They say I'm not preaching the Word of God. And they say that when they can't confront this, they start bloviating and cut a fit. I mean, they, they'll, they'll say all kinds of things. But they cannot confess that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is Old Covenant. It is not even a testament. A testament is an event that happened on Mount Calvary. So they cannot entertain these things. And so this is the last voice you'll have of truth. I don't know how long the world will last now the Lord hadn't shown me that the trumpet will be blowing before long because people cannot be converted now. Because here's what happened. If you're converted into this truth, Satan will attack you. I get reports all the time of people that love this truth. Satan chokes them. He drags them out of bed. He paralyzes them. He'll do everything in the world. He turns their families against them, their business people against them. They lose their job. He attacks them. He's got so many demons that can attack so few of us. He drove us into the wilderness, you see. So the Holy Ghost now is grieved. And when you grieve the Holy Ghost, that means he lost all hope. Now, this is God himself has lost hope. He told Abraham, if you can find ten righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, I won't destroy it. You can't find ten Holy Ghost people out shouting the victory day. There's no Holy Ghost church. Satan won. So he took this, and it's grieved the Holy Ghost, and it's all over now. I'm going to be here, and I'm going to let the light shine. I'll be telling you truth after truth. Listen to the program. And you that love God and have been touched by the Spirit, and you know it's this is the... Um, temple of God. This is the body that uh, God lives in and you understand that it's not by the Bible, it's by the Spirit. And this here is your last voice. This is the last one. Now there be voices after I'm gone. Some of these little people will stand up. Now there's a lot of uh, people that are very uh, vile and, and evil people will take this up. You know, they're kicked out of society anyway. You know, like some of these rock musicians, all oh, they'll tear up Bibles in them places they rent, but they're just vile, evil people. They're not in society anyway, so to speak. And they'll take this up and try to pollute it, which some of them already have. Demons, alcoholics, and people like that, they'll try to pollute this truth. But there'll be a true word here. There'll be some people that will stand up for this for years, and some will maybe even die in the future because Satan's getting tired of us. And this is the only voice... Soon they'll probably regulate YouTube and we won't have a voice. So this is your last voice telling you the Bible's an idol, the Bible's the mark of the beast, and it's over now. It's too late now because Mystery Babylon is already built and the old harlot is already built. It's all over the world. Satan killed all the Quakers back in the 1600s and he did not want that, them to win out over his Bible. He controls them now with the Bible. So I wanted to tell you that. That's where we're at. But you that's been touched by the Spirit, continue on, even if you have to lay low. You know, in, in Jesus' day, many people didn't confess Christ because they'd kick them out of the synagogue. So if you want to lay low, I don't know how God will judge all these things. But this is the only truth that's on earth today. The Bible is an idol. The Bible's the mark of the beast. The voice of Jesus is the way you get faith. And this is the only way. They can't repent. See, if they repent and say... I'm not going to go by this no more. This is an idol. This is made by man and it's got a lot of lies in it. I'm not going to... They lose their job. They lose their family. They lose their place in society and they can't live. That's the way it is today. And so we're in terrible times, perilous times, the apostle says. So the Spirit speaketh expressively 
now that the Holy Ghost is grieved, and when he's grieved, and he's in sorrow, he's in mourning, because there's going to be destruction soon, he's going to bury this world pretty soon, because none of them love God in the Spirit. Thank you, Father, for this truth, and we'll let this light shine for the little ones that will come in, the very few. Thank you, Jesus.